Rated M for Mature. Hi, I'm Major Lucasio, and welcome to the last episode before the season finale of Walking Dead, No Time Left. Today, we'll be talking to Nick Herman and Gary Witta about episode four, as well as a sneak preview of episode five, right here on Playing Dead. So guys, thank you for coming back to the show. Uh, so we know we've talked about this before because you've been on before, but tell me, you know, what do you guys do on episode four? What were your jobs? Sure, yeah, for uh, four, I was the director. And I was the writer of episode four, and I'm also the story consultant across the whole series. I need to start with this. I know it's kind of at the end, but Lee getting bit, which is your fault, I'm assuming. Is it what? I blame you? Lee gets bit? Did you, have you been planning this Wait. from the beginning? <laughs> I mean, it, at the beginning, it was very, like, kind of, like, it was just a beat, and that was all we knew about it. It's like, right. Lee gets bit, Clem is missing. That's all we know about episode four, so we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there, you know what I mean? Some people, you know, are in complete denial. They're like, oh, my God, maybe Lee's immune, maybe right. he's the chosen one, maybe they can cut the arm off or save him somehow, and other people are like, deal with it, accept it, Lee's gone, it's over, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of disagreement among players about what the bite actually means. So, uh, Gary, as writer of this episode, what specifically did you want people to take away from this? Obviously, a big part of what episode four is meant to be is, is teeing up the finale. And I feel like we did that successfully. We ended on a great cliffhanger moment. People yeah. freak out when the, yeah. when the episode <laughs> ends. In terms of the big picture, I kind of felt like if you look at the overall kind of energy of the season... Uh, we, we were coming off a very, very emotionally dark episode in episode three. And so f four, I think, is probably kind of structured most like, I think it's one of the most action heavy episodes. We have a lot of zombie shooting. We have a lot of ac fun action stuff. We have characters like Molly who are intended to kind of lighten the tone and let right. players kind of just enjoy themselves a little bit more before we, of course, you know, pull the rug from them. So when Lee gets bit and he discusses it with the group and tells her that was kind of, that's a big moment because everything Lee did to everyone else is sort of all building up to like how they view Lee now. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's one of my favorite moments in the season just because it isn't your choice, you know, you're not making choices anymore. You've made choices up into that point and, right. and other now, characters are making choices. Now they're now. making decisions. Now they're, you know, you can imagine someone else at home playing Krista and you know, you're like, <laughs> she's making decisions on whether or not to come with you. Like that's just what that moment feels like. And that's, I just love how that works. You were, you were just saying, like, you, you chose to go alone, right? Yeah. It was just, it just felt like the right Lee thing to do for me. I was just like, no, there's no point in burdening them. Mm -hmm. We put a tremendous amount of work into that scene because there are eight different outcomes in terms of the different group variations that can come. You know, Lee can go alone or with any combination of the right. players that are left in the game at that point. And beyond just the eight outcomes, there's multiple different ways for those eight outcomes to happen. If you could see like behind the wiring of how right. that scene, it would drive you crazy as it did us when we were trying to make it work. Like when Kenny decides whether or not he's gonna go with you, that's the result of every decision that you've made. I said earlier, Nate Silver would freak out looking at the mathematics of Kenny and how his mind works in terms of all the decisions right. that are being tracked because it's so complicated and Krista and Omid have their own mathematics that are going on. All your chickens come home to roost. Every choice that you've made in the game up to that point makes a, makes a difference now. I really enjoyed Molly, and apparently a lot of fans do too. Who, where did she come from? She, she was definitely intended to be like a little bit of Glenn, a little, like very capable, can move around the city, independent, survivor, right. a little bit Michonne, a badass, yeah, a little bit Daryl, a badass. We were also looking for like just a strong female character because we have, you know, not to say our, our female characters aren't strong, but they, they've got their issues. Lily and Carly and Clem are all very strong in their own way, but we wanted just like a fuck you character. Right. When Molly says she's leaving, you can choose to say you should come with us, or you can just say, yeah, you should just go or whatever. I haven't seen anyone pick anything other than you should come sure with us because everybody wants her to right. stay. Yeah. You'll notice that tonally, the episode starts very dark. Right. And then when she shows up, things start to appear more hopeful. And maybe you feel we, a little more safe. We discover a boat. Maybe <laughs> yeah, we can go to right. Crawford and get these supplies. And then as soon as she leaves, everything turns to shit again. Right. And so she is kind of this little ray of light in a way. Uh, and for that reason, because the, again, the tonal palette of Walking Dead is very dark overall, we have to be careful that we use characters like Molly very sparingly. Well, she, I mean, she's certainly not a light character overall. Her backstory is pretty quite dark. dark. Pretty, yeah. pretty dark. The story can play out. You either never discover why her, she has this backstory, or you discover this third videotape that has this kind of dark secret, and she kind of finally kind of spills her guts and becomes this is a nice little vulnerable moment for Molly where she explains why she was in Crawford and why she left. And uh, it's, 
It's, it's an interesting part of telling an interactive story because some people, I heard from some people that played the game, was like, you know, I thought Molly was an interesting character, but I wish I'd have known more about her backstory. Right, right, like, well, right. you could have if you'd have found that tape. Some people. That's how I feel. I was like, oh, there's, I there's more to this. I don't so. like to tell people how to play the game. I like, you know, but when they walk past that locker that has Molly's tape in it, I'm like, no, go back, go back. <laughs> Is that the one with the handprint on it? Yes. yes. Um, the only other choice in the game where I'll nudge people one way or the other is bringing Clem to Crawford or leaving her back because if yeah, you, you take her, moment. that to me gives you the most satisfying moment in the game. People cheer right. when they realize Clem just saved Molly and shot a walker. They're like, yeah. That was a crazy decision for me. I got to keep Clementine with me. She's my responsibility. She's the sole purpose I'm doing everything I'm yeah. doing. The numbers don't always tell you the whole story. People really agonize over that decision. Well, there is that moment where you think like, well, maybe, you know, I don't know this town. She might get killed as soon as I walk in. You know, right. like, you don't know anything about this Even place. though we give you a really long fuse to make the decision, people still pause the pause. game because they want more time. <laughs> right. Most people came down on the side of both things are dangerous maybe taking her to Crawford is more dangerous but at the end of the day she's always safer by my side right. I'm always more comfortable knowing she's in my in my sight Crawford is this really ominous place that they keep referring to and that they go to what where did that come from what was Crawford about like that was such a crazy awesome place with the zombie barrier and the Big pile. Yeah, the, the, the zombie pikes. barricade was was one of my uh, suggestions. It's amazing. You, you, you always <laughs> want to do some things that are just horrible, and the right. idea of like living, living or undead kind of zombie scarecrows kind of writhing around just felt like it was a good gross out thing. Yeah, I, it's think awesome. it's, I think it's a good introduction to Crawford. The theme of The Walking Dead is that what happens to humanity when civilization falls. I think people either come together and the best version of humanity emerges, or the worst version, right. and you see you see examples of both. And Crawford obviously is an example of the worst. Yeah. Uh, they've survived, but the cost at which they had survived up until that point was they had basically re given up all their humanity. Right. Some people picked up on this that when you're faced with that choice of whether or not to save Ben or leave him behind because he's a drag on the group, uh, is Crawford in a nutshell. Right. As you're leaving Crawford, you have the choice to either become like them or reject their philosophy of your you know, survival of the fittest. So let's talk about one of my favorite things is uh, player choices. Uh, first one uh, is Kenny in the attic with the little boy. The so 75% of people chose to help Kenny out and kill the kid. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about the moral ambiguity of, of whether one thing's right or wrong. It's how people view that choice. I think most people chose to kill the boy because they felt like after everything that Kenny went through with Duck, that they weren't going to put him through that again of having to like put a bullet in a kid's head or whatever. Right. Some people, however, 25% of people saw that choice a different way and felt that after everything he went through and given that he was so emotionally broken that this could actually be cathartic for him. So when Lee goes down into the sewer and we go to the, uh, the shelter and we meet Vernon for the first time and he pulls a gun on him, 66% uh, of players chose to reason with him, whereas you know, the flip side was to threaten him. It's, it, it's, it's interesting, most players want to play as a good character. They don't want to be the threatening guy or the bad guy. And a part of the reason for that is that they, they always worry about the impact of Clem. After, right. we, after we killed that St. John brother in episode two and <laughs> yeah. Clem saw it, people are terrified now that any, anything yeah. bad they might do, Clem's like, oh my God, what have you done? <laughs> oh, no, why did you have to see that? Constantly. Right. Like, like Lee, <laughs> Lee goes to like, like a piss in the woods and Clem's like, what are you doing? Oh my Jesus, like, Clem. <laughs> why are you watching everything? <laughs> <laughs> Can I not do anything to, for myself? That could be a whole meme. You guys could make that right. into a whole big what, thing. Yeah, everything what, Lee what, does. We'll do a YouTube <laughs> compilation. <laughs> um, but what's interesting is when he goes in the sewers, it's the very first time from the, since the very beginning of the game in episode one that he's totally separated from Clementine and everyone else. He's completely alive. It'd be that. funny. That's just like, Lee! Oh, really? God. Again? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so you do have some license to be a bit more of a badass character right. and, and take a tougher line. And in fact, if you do choose to threaten uh, Vernon, it has some of the, one of the most, I think, fun Lee. Like, he turns into Sam Jackson yeah. in that oh, scene. Totally. He's like a real badass. Yeah. I love when he whips that out. All of a sudden, it's just like, Lee, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny because it's you choosing it too, and you're just like, tell him to say fuck you, and you hit that, and yeah. he'll say something, you're like, oh, I'm shocked. So the final stat I have here is, uh, is the big one. Uh, when Lee got bit, 80% of people chose to reveal it, which is crazy to me. I, I mean, that's a huge you, stat. Just, you said earlier, you hit it, right? Yeah, I hit it. I was like, oh, no, I'll deal with it. This is my own thing. I don't want to, you yeah, know. Yeah, that, that surprised us, too. I mean, in we, in playtest, that, that seemed to go around 50-50. Yeah, in, in playtesting, it was right down the middle. And I expected, ultimately, again, because of the players wanted to do the virtuous thing, which is, I, I guess, to be honest and reveal it. Right. I expected most people, not to the degree that they did. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and again, in talking to players and listening to playthroughs, what most people say is, it's, it's gonna come out eventually, it's better to be honest about it now. It's, it's the only choice in the game where we give 
players a second chance to rethink their decision. Yeah. In real life, if you wanted to say, oh, I hid it from you earlier, here it is, I'm sorry, like, that you should be able to do that. And we didn't want to restrict people and have them go, oh, I, if this was real life, I could just do it. Why isn't the right. game allowing me to do it? People, one of the reasons to hide the bite might be that you're worried that the group will turn you away. Right. In reality, it's the opposite. And actually, this says something about the good human nature that plays in our group, that if you reveal the bite, it actually locks players into helping you. Yeah, Krista and Omid, are, if you show them the bite, they're like, well, you might not make it to, you know, to save Clem. Like, we, we're coming with you. You know what I mean? We've got to help right. you. Some people are very glad that they got the full group to come with them. But the players that are alone don't feel like they failed. They feel like that's the courageous that's choice they, that they've they made. Want. They made a choice yeah. to go on their own. Right. Like, this is, my, this is on me. This is my job to protect Clementine. I can't ask yeah. you to put yourselves in danger. And they want to be kind of the lone, the lone wolf. Well, and like, and like we said earlier, like their experience through episode five is going to be dramatically different. And like it's going to, they're going to get what they, what they wanted, right? They want to be alone. They want to deal with everything alone. And they will. Right. But people aren't just rewinding because if you do that, constantly kind of re restoring your save, choices don't mean anything anymore. No. Now it's time for some questions from players. Uh, this first question is from Diavel, uh, who has a question for you, Gary. Okay. Uh, what were your main inspirations when writing this episode? I, I, this is going to sound like a lame thing to say, but honestly, the, the previous three episodes, I really just, I just really, the, the Telltale had, had set such a great um, tone with these characters, and I really just wanted, I was so, I was people around here will tell I was terrified right. about episode four, because I was the only writer from outside of Telltale to be invited to come in and contribute a piece of this. And episodes one, two, and three came out, and we're just kicking ass, high reviews, right. peak glowing praise. And I didn't want to be the guy that comes in and like, oh, like suddenly. Oops. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't really taking inspiration from anywhere, but other than the walking, the you know, Robert's universe, and the, uh, some of the other great zombie stories that I grew up on. There's a couple of little, um, little nods, little Easter eggs to uh, some of the Romero zombie movies that are in right. there that I kind of slipped in. But for the most part, just wanting to, to stay tonally consistent with what Telltale had established at that point and, and on a quality level just feel like pe people felt this episode could stand alongside the rest. Jacqueline asks in all caps, why did you kill Chuck? I really liked him. He was oh, he was one of the only smart people in the group, exclamation. But I'm happy you gave us the option to kill Ben. We made the decision to kind of lose him off screen, which we hadn't done with a, with a major right. character before, and it, right. it felt like an, an, a different way to do Not that. Not everyone gets a heroic movie star death. Some right. people just die. Right. And, you know, but in a I, sewer. I, I, <laughs> sadder. In a way, yeah, was, he, in a yeah, way he yeah. died saving Clem, which is, yeah. you know, he did have a heroic moment, and don't like anyone too much in this game, because we will take no. them away from you. No. So, Trevor Ninja 10's question is, did you ever consider a scene where Clem refers to Lee as dad, or reject her parents for Lee. That's, wow. There's a, a moment in the morgue when, when uh, Verna asks Lee, is she your daughter? And you can say no, which can, you can read that as either an overt lie to try and get Verna's sympathy. Some people say yes, because, because that's honestly how they, that's how they see the truth of it now. They yeah. do think that she it might as well be his daughter. The parents right. aren't coming back in their, in their mind. They're never gonna see the parents again. And, you know, that's, that's Lee's journey from originally feeling like this girl is someone that he's kind of saddled with um, to really, you know, having this emotional bond. Before we wrap up today, uh, we can't leave without discussing episode five. Can you guys give us any hints or anything without spoiling anything? I saw, I saw the, final, uh, the final quarter of the episode and still by the end, I just, I just sat in my office for like probably like an hour and a half and didn't do any work, just sat there and went, I can't, I don't know if I can do this. But people, you know, like, <laughs> pe people who know The Walking Dead I'm sure are bracing themselves to what might be coming. And I'm not saying it's one thing or the other, um, but it is by far the most emotionally potent episode. By, it's not even close. No. <laughs> um, God. I mean, there's been quite a few tears, right? Even around, even around oh, the yeah. office, people. Oh, man. When you block, it, block the time out to play it, give yourself time afterwards. I'm not even kidding. I believe you and that's why I'm fearful. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for being here today and talking to us. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank awesome. you so All right, much. thanks for having us. Yeah. Remember to email your questions to playingdead at telltalegames.com or call 707-701-DEAD and leave a message. Be sure to sign up for the official website or follow us on Facebook or Twitter to be the first one to find out when the next episode of Playing Dead goes live. this before I think I think the game should end with a mini game where you're Lee and Clementine as zombies eating people over the credits. Well there's there always go. season two. Right? Yeah, yeah yeah there yes. you go. But like you know like Pac-Man style.